Welcome to the program. You know we look at news, views, and truths from a decidedly biblical perspective. This hour, I'm introducing a new book, and uh, I've actually contributed a chapter to it. But Terry James is the general editor of Deceivers, Exposing Evil Seducers and Their Last Day's Deception. The book examines the many facets of today's rapidly degenerating culture, and each chapter looks at a specific corruptive aspect of today's issues throughout the prophetic, revealing lens of the light of God's Word. In the garden, Eve listened to a lie. Millennia later, all of mankind is subject to a myriad of lies by the father of lies. And as a result, we are drowning in deception. Even the church is struggling with one deception after another, one false teacher in teaching, and is flirting with Laodicea, and in some cases, drowning in Laodicea. Going back to the early 1960s, the Western world was embroiled in free thinking, and God and his ways became, well, increasingly irrelevant, which opened the door for the deception of the next half century. So who warns us about deception? Jesus, Paul, Timothy, Titus, and more. And much of the Western world has the reprobate mindset warned of in Romans 1. Such a mindset is prone to deception because it has forsaken God. Now, as one of the chapter titles suggests, there has been a subtle satanic seduction of society. Well, joining me for two segments will be the editor of the book, Terry James, and Eric Barger will be my co-host for these two segments. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. Well, thank you so much, Jan, for inviting me. Jan, I think this is obviously an important book. I'm just glad that both of us were able to contribute chapters to it. Terry, and we haven't talked on air for a while, you and I. We probably reviewed one of your previous books on air, but this one on deceivers. Let me just ask you an open, kind of an introductory question here. Because of all the end time signals in Bible prophecy, why did you choose to investigate this particular particular sign writing deceivers exposing evil seducers and their last day's deception well jen i believe that uh, well i know it did it came to me i think as a result of the election the president's election of 2016 everywhere we look there's deception with regard to what's gone on before this election and since mm-hmm. this election to me it just struck me as the time uh, Possibly the time Jesus was specifically talking about, when deception will become exceedingly strong, whether we're looking at the media, whether we're looking at politicians individually, or any other way, deception is rampant. You know, we've had the the media termed fake news. Yeah. I'm not so sure that term that, that's inaccurate. I think the, the election of 2016 is probably what triggered my mind, and of course I believe the Holy Spirit leads in, in books. And the book's doing very well for its opening days and opening weeks. Eric, your thoughts? As I went through the book, and of course I, I, I had seen your chapter, and I knew what my chapter was all about, and I had some direction from Terry and we had talked about it and we've been praying about it. But as I thought about this, so many of the words, sentences, entire sections of different chapters could have been written by other authors within this book because so many of us are seeing the same thing independent of one another. And that, that was something that really struck me. Even today, as I went through three different chapters, I saw things that could have easily been your work, Jan, or mine, or Terry's. That tells me that we are we're trying to wake people up about the same things God is independently and somewhat collectively talking to us, but it's very interesting to me. Uh, Terry, I'm going back to your comment just a moment ago. We have witnessed in recent months, I mean, the great deception in the realm of government and political and journalism influence in America. And you and I were talking about this on the phone the other day. And perhaps there's no more profound and troubling deception taking place than in both the mainstream news and the entertainment media. So the book deals in detail with that deception that has contributed to splitting the nation almost down the middle in so many ways. Talk about this troubling reality in today's America. Absolutely, it has. Uh, As I said, the mainstream media has pretty much taken up one side, and to me, it's the dark side of the equation. I'm not saying that the more conservative side doesn't also have its dark side, but definitely the mainstream media, in my view at least, has taken the road away from God in every 
case, the uh, entertainment media, of course, had such an impact on the young people, the millennials. Uh, Todd Strandberg, my partner in RaptureReady.com, yes, had done a tremendous uh, job in doing a chapter on this particular problem. But the millennials are suffering because of mainstream media and because particularly of entertainment media. They are more prone to follow, you know, the stars and all of the other things. The social media, of course, is all a part of that. And to me, it's just bringing this nation down. Let me just cite the various chapters in this book. I happen to open it up with the religionist deceivers that are rampant. And I talk about deception in the church. We move on to Dr. Dave Reagan. Signs outshine Satan's seduction. A treatment of how all the prophetic indicators of these fast-moving times are coming together. By Dr. Gary Fraser, Laodicean lies. Special attention might be given to how recent decades have morphed into the Laodicean age, perhaps with a survey of the event and circumstances that have made it happen. Number four, Cultural Craftiness by Don McGee. Number five, The Subtle Satanic Seduction of Society. Love that title. Michael Heil might contrast the truth as presented in the Bible with the lies inflicted by Satan in every aspect of life in America and the world. Chapter six, The Schoolroom Seducers by Israel Wayne. Number seven, Deception in the Middle East by Philip Goodman. Chapter eight, New World Order Wizardry. Damon Duck. Chapter nine, The Four Foreteller Fabricators, Nathan Jones. Number 10, Media Manipulators. And as you said, Terry Todd Strandberg has done a fantastic job on that. Chapter 11, Demon Conjuring Con Men. And that's by Pastor Billy Crone. And Chapter 12, Interdimensional Deception. I want to comment on that. That's Gary Stearman. Fallen Angelic Activity is more and more coming into end time pictures, setting up a post-rapture world for great deception. And Chapter 13, The Israel Revilers by Jim Fletcher, chapter 14, last but not least, by all means, From Deception to Deliverance by Eric Barger. Absolutely a great chapter. Yep, and that's his testimony and some exhortations as well. But let's just dwell for a moment on this interdimensional deception, Gary Stearman, fallen angelic activity. I was fascinated. I was riveted to the chapter, Terry James. However, it was troubling. It is a very troubling thing. And part Part of that troubling aspect is that there's not enough people aware of it. These things are happening, and uh, much of it is taking place totally apart from anybody's realization. I mean, they've become so steep, too, in the entertainment media's presentation of these things uh, that this actual deception that's taking place is, becomes like a fiction to them, and so they can't see it. Well, we're dealing here in this chapter with fallen angelic activity, and we're dealing with UFOs, and we're dealing with other things, and I don't want to go into detail. Eric, what is your thought on this interdimensional deception? I think in the end times, I mean, we've been conditioned for the last uh, 60 to 80 years or so with all kinds of entertainment, whether it be in book and now, of course, in in really high-def movies about beings from outer space or other beings from other worlds and those kind of things. And so there's been a desensitization process going on about these things. And whether uh, somebody actually has physical evidence that, yes, they've seen UFOs and we've seen some really stunning film just recently, a film taken from airplanes by uh, independent observers. You know, I I believe this is all to get our eyes off of what is really true. And uh, Satan will use this, and it's obvious he's been using it for a long time. He's paid Hollywood big bucks to do it. When I say he has, you understand that the people in Hollywood don't necessarily, they're not having secret meetings and organizing how they're going to get the world to believe in UFOs. But uh, these things are identified. They're demonic powers, and I think we need to understand it from that viewpoint. listening to Understanding the Times Radio. I'm talking for the couple of segments here with uh, Terry James, editor of the new book, Deceivers, Exposing Evil Seducers and Their Last Days Deception. I'm happy to say you can get it in our bookstore, olivetreeviews.org, olivetreeviews.org. Give us my office a call. Sign up for print and e-newsletters. It'll be contained in those newsletters. Eric and I have contributed a chapter, but some other authors have contributed some dynamic chapters as well, including Dave Reagan, Dr. Gary Fraser. Terry James, how did you go about picking some of these contributors to your book? I strictly, uh, Jan, prayed about it, mm-hmm. and these are the names that came to mind, and they came quickly. I'm surprised. I usually agonize over these things, but um, but these names came very quickly, and interestingly, all but one accepted almost instantly. Like Eric was saying, I think that uh, we all realize that this great deception that's going on is, you know, the first thing that Jesus talked about in all of that discourse. I think most of us realize that and recognize it instantly, the, the word deceivers, well, yeah, they're among us. 
And when I chose these people, I believe it was a Holy Spirit thing all the way. I want to make a comment about uh, the chapter with Pastor Billy Crone, and he asks us to realize the influence of the enemy, Satan, in the world and the church. And he has a fantastic quote, which I'd like to read on page 236. He says, as you can see, the Bible emphatically declares that a real live devil, Satan, evil one, whatever you want to call him, actually exists. From the beginning to the end, Genesis to Revelation, he's mentioned all over the place. Therefore, how can people, even professing Christians, say he's just a mere symbol of evil? In fact, you have to deny what the Bible says in order to deny the existence of Satan, which last time I checked is not a good thing to do, especially for the Christian. If I can't take the passages literally that speak of the literal devil, then why should I take anything else in the Bible literally? Pastor Billy Crone is always making a case that we need to have a healthy respect for our adversary to understand him and war against him. Talking about deception, if you've heard the the latest pontiff's uh, latest comments, you know, there is no hell. I know that he has walked that back to some extent, but uh, it got out there pretty quick in the Vatican and tried to persuade people's opinion on that. But uh, this is kind of attitude that there is no hell, there is no devil to worry about. That's a, that's a grand deception, I believe, that is really growing. Play just a real quick clip here. Uh, Pastor Jack Hibbs, he actually is speaking at my conference back in 2015 on the grand deception. And I think his comments tie into our discussion. So if you're a note taker tonight, here we go. Point number one regarding the grand deception. How do I identify it? We're only going to pick six things tonight. We could go on forever. Let's pick six. How do we identify the grand deception and the elements of deception, recognizing them? And when I say elements, what do I mean by that? I'm talking about the basic fundamental reasons of deception. Why is it employed? Why is deception out there? The issue is this. Though Satan is a defeated foe, there's one way for him to still inflict pain into the heart of a loving God, and that is to deceive people and blind them and confuse them from ever accepting Christ in the first place. The grand deception is to get people off the course of not only walking with Christ, but of course finding Christ. So when we talk about the elements, the elements are to deceive The Bible tells us in 1 Timothy 4, verse 1, Now the Spirit, that is the Holy Spirit, says that in the latter times, some will depart from the faith. I say that painfully. I pastor a large church. You don't have to pastor a large church to experience what I'm about to say. But it's a heartbreak to see how many people in the last 12 to 24 months who have walked with Jesus for many, many decades are now saying, you know what, I'm done with this. Giving up. Wives giving up on their husbands. Husbands giving up on their wives. Parents giving up on their kids giving up. We've had people turn in their Bible to follow a life pursuit of this book series, The Shades of Grey thing. Yeah, absolutely happening. And you try to counsel them out of it. They've been deceived. The point he was making is one way for Satan to inflict pain into the heart of a loving God is to deceive people. Terry, your thoughts? Yeah, I think that's absolutely correct. That's one of his ploys, and it's working. Yeah, if Satan could get us to believe there is no Satan, it's just the same in a different sort of sense, but it's just the same effect as if there is no God, because then people, their conception of what Scripture says and what the Bible has taught for all these centuries is incorrect. That's what people would mm. walk away with. Terry, I'm fascinated by a chapter here by Jim Fletcher. He writes about the Israel revilers, and he lists them, he names them, not all of them, but he's got you know, Bill and Lynn Hyde in there, Southern Baptist fellow, Dr. Russell Moore, the religious left, the targeting of millennials. And this is a tragedy I'm not sure you and I ever thought we'd live to see. I agree with that. And when the mainstream evangelical church starts saying things like uh, Israel has been replacing God's uh, holy plan by the uh, Christian church, just a total false teaching. And there again is another deceptive area we're in, an area of false teaching. And Jim did a tremendous job on this chapter of pointing out how that even the Christian community is turning uh, against the Jews, against uh, Israel, and uh, no longer consider them God's chosen people, but uh, the church has replaced, and replacement theology and so forth. Zola Levitt and I used to have uh, conversations about this, and Zola could see what's happening now. He would truly be exercised. 
Yes, he would. Indeed, he would, because I didn't think I would live to see Southern Baptists and many Southern Baptist churches remain a solid pro-Israel churches. But some are beginning to stray, and the one who seems to be leading the charge against Israel and the Jewish people, Russell Moore, Southern Baptist Convention leader, Ethics and Religious Liberty Committee. So that's just something I didn't think I'd see in my lifetime, Terry, and I'm so glad that this is included in your book. Again, folks, the name of the book is Deceivers, Exposing Evil Seducers and Their Last Day's Deception. Find it in my store, olivetreeviews.org, olivetreeviews.org. You may office a call, get our printer e-newsletter. They'll be in those as well. I want to talk about a couple of other chapters that I think are really significant. We may not be able to get to all of them, but The Laodicean Lies by Dr. Gary Fraser stands out in my mind. I'd like to talk just for a minute about some of the comments that I contributed in my religionist deceivers are rampant. We need to hear what Eric has uh, written about as well, but there's so much substance in this book, folks. And again, the end time lie is that Satan is absolutely on the move trying to deceive, trying to fool Christians, non-Christians, about so many topics. We've even got in this book, you've got what's going on in our school system, and uh, that is written by Israel Wayne. He's got a whole chapter on that. If that's something that concerns you, there's a wonderful chapter about it in this book, Deceivers. I'm back in just a couple of minutes. Don't go away. Understanding the Times continues in a moment with more from Jan, Eric, and Terry James. But first, a few reminders. If you'd like your own copy of today's broadcast on Compact Disc, just phone 763 763- Five five nine four 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 four. Secondly, don't forget our annual fall conference scheduled for September 29. For more conference details, visit our website, olivetreeviews.org. Finally, our sincere thanks to all our financial partners for being so faithful in underwriting this ministry. Remember, we are listener-supported without any commercial support whatsoever. Please consider a tax-deductible gift today addressed to Olive Tree Ministries, Box 1452, Maple Grove, Minnesota, 55311. Jen and Eric return with Terry James right after this. Teaching Bible prophecy would be one of the greatest things that a church could do to its congregants because, one, it gives them the hope of Christ's soon coming. Secondly, it motivates them to get the job done. That is to get out there and tell their friends and their family and their co-workers that Jesus Christ is coming. And then thirdly, it brings people great great confidence. Confidence in knowing that God's Word never fails. It will never fail because what God has said in the past has been confirmed by His prophetic fulfillment. Study Bible prophecy and get excited about the future. Understanding the Times 2018 is not that far away. Saturday, September 29th, 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Please note the earlier starting time. There are still tickets available for $10, $15, and $20. Visit our website, olivetreeviews.org, and go to conferences or contact brushfire.com. I'll give you an 800 number as soon as you get a pencil and paper. Don't miss the like-minded fellowship as well, as our cutting-edge speakers include Pastor Jack Hibbs, Pastor J.D. Farag, Pastor Billy Crone, Eric Barger, and Amir Sarfati. Headlines today are a harbinger of his return. We'll unpack that Saturday, September 29th. Learn to be a watchman on the wall. We live in challenging times, but things aren't falling apart. They're falling into place. Learn how at Understanding the Times 2018. For tickets, order online or call Brush Fire at 888-338-5338. That's 888-338-5338. The conference will be live streamed on our website, olivetreeviews.org, at no cost. And you know, the Bible speaks of an end time falling away, falling away from truth, from sound doctrine, from a solid biblical gospel. The Bible says people will give heed to the doctrine of demons. There will be an increase in evil and a virtual occult invasion. What happens when these things invade the church? The church in America is becoming a part of the great deception. And what did you mean by that? I mean that overall there is a great deception going on around the world. People must understand this is how Satan works. He's the father of all lies. He's the great deceiver. 
On today's edition of Understanding the Times, you're enjoying Terry James from Rapture Ready Ministry. Our topic of discussion this hour, Terry's newest publication, Deceivers, Exposing Evil Seducers and Their Last Day's Deception. You can find this book in our online bookstore. Just click on to olivetreeviews.org. Once again, Jen Markell. It's identifying the appearance of deception, church, tonight, friends, is the fact that it's not always dressed up in red underwear with a pitchfork. Deception looks just like us. With the intent to taint and embed in your hearing, in your faith, something that's just a little bit off. And over time, you'll be lost. You'll miss the truth. You'll be messed up. And welcome back. We are talking about deception for these two segments, and you could discover the false prophets hiding behind the thin veneer of religious half-truths. You can unveil the globalist agenda behind diplomatic, judicial, and political hypocrisy. You can go behind misleading headlines and entertainment illusions to discern the truth, and oh, so much more in the book that Terry James serves as editor of Deceivers, Exposing Evil Seducers and Their Last Day deception. Terry James, let's just for a moment jump to the topic of uh, globalism. And you talk about it a lot. So do I. I've got a DVD on it. The developments in this area have changed the world order, as you state, and they're coming at this generation fast and furiously. Rage against anything that disrupts the globalist drive to construct a one world government seems at the heart of end time deception. Talk to me about that for a moment, please. Damon Doug did a tremendous job on this uh, chapter, incidentally. Globalism, of course, I believe, is at the very heart of all the rage that we see happening since this 2016 election and before. Satan, I believe, he had on track the preparation of the platform from which Antichrist would launch at some point. He doesn't know when, when that's going to happen, exactly when, when his man is going to come forth, uh, because he's not he, he doesn't know the future. He knows the future. He doesn't know the details of the right. future. Globalism and the entire world attitude about wanting to come together as one, as John Lennon would say, yeah. is at the heart of all of this rage we see happening now. I, I think the election of Donald Trump, and Donald Trump is no saint. I'm not giving him any special sainthood. I'm just saying that his election, he's God's man for the hour, obviously. God raises up kings and he puts them down. But mm-hmm. I believe that his election has completely discombobulated the, the globalists. And that's why all the rage, I think it's much more than just Hillary losing the election. I believe it, it's a rage uh, that is satanic at its core, and that's why it's not going away. He knows how to keep the rage going. You also talk about Middle East turmoil, Middle East deception, because Israel is destined, prophetically anyway, to be deceived in the matter of peace. And you've got a whole chapter on that. The process of peace is what uh, Satan offers the world. You know, the false peace is what it's going to be, of course. Jesus Christ offers peace, but the world uh, sees only a peace that is a political peace, a peace that is brokered by the globalists of the world. This is another deception that Satan is going to use. And Isaiah the prophet, of course, says that it will be a peace that will destroy many, and they want to Israel to give up land for peace. Well, there again, Satan is yeah. deceiving the world. He, he's saying that the way to get peace is to do something against what God has already declared is not going to happen. Israel will never lose its its land. Again, the deception is great, and this peace process, this whole peace process we've been observing for all these years with the roadmap for peace and all of this kind of thing, is just simply a satanic ploy through humanistic operatives such as the globalists. Well, Terry, you asked me to write a chapter on uh, some of the things going haywire in the church, and, you know, I got into writing that chapter Oh, I think it was last summer. And I realized I honestly could write an entire book, and Eric actually, he could do probably a far better job on it than I. But let me just hit some of the bullet points, because in this chapter, I try to unpack the abundance of false teachers and teachings. But in naming names, I may save some from the snares of apostasy. But in the process, people like me and Eric Barger as well, we become a problem to the church, which is heartbreaking, because we start pointing at just some of the things that are absolutely 
absolutely out of whack today from the mistake the mainliners made over a hundred years ago. The fact that evangelicals are going shaky now, making the same mistake as the mainliners made in the 1900 and 1920. I would talk about the new ways of doing church and the deception there, secret sensitive, a gospel light, church growth, none of it healthy. Talk a little bit about the hipster church, emergent church, the laughing revival that isn't so funny I wrote about. Today's so-called prophets who seem to be all about profit, financial. Uh, Protestants returning to Catholicism. I never thought I'd live to see the day, but that's happening. The religious left, red-letter Christians, discernment turning ugly, and I think one of the greatest tragedies and one of the greatest deceptions in the church today, Terry and Eric, is the fact that the church is abandoning not only eschatology or Bible prophecy, but also their strong support of Israel. And I try to unpack all of that. And Eric, as I gave that lineup, I know you identify a lot with what I wrote about because you you write about the very same (laughs) kinds of things in your booklets and your DVDs that you produce and all that. For instance, I never thought I'd see the day that Protestants start acting more like Catholics, and the fact that the evangelicals have gone so shaky. Well, and and we're looked at as just negative naysayers when we point out the differences, the vast differences, not just little ones. We're talking about the the differences that cannot be reconciled between Catholicism and and Protestantism, and this has been something the church understood for a long time, and now this the, the, the brand of Christians that are out there, and now most of them have never heard about this stuff. They haven't been educated. The same with prophecy. It is a, a topic that is left off the, the menu. And apologetics obviously was, it was way too negative. We wouldn't want that in our churches, mm-hmm. so we don't talk about uh, discernment, about cults and so on. In this interview, I've got a comment on this while I just have the mic just for a second. You know, I've seen you and I come up with some of the same questions independent of one another when we're going to do an interview. Five of the six questions that I have written down that I was going to bring up have already been asked. Okay. It's amazing to me how God has orchestrated what we've already done in this interview. So as he orchestrated Terry to bring in the particular authors he did for these chapters, I'm seeing the same thing take place. And I know it up close and personal because sure. I see my own handwriting here on questions you've already asked. The chapter that uh, Todd wrote on the liberal media, Billy Crone on Satan, Jim Fletcher on liberals and on Lynn Hybels in Israel. And that all those were things I was going to bring up. So it's amazing how God has decided no matter who asked it, it was going to get out there today. Yeah. Terry James, I just raised a point. I want your feedback on it because I said I never thought I'd see the day when the evangelical church would abandon Bible prophecy and start to abandon their support of Israel. Well, that's exactly right. And again, that's that's what uh, Satan ploy. That is one of his um, key operating points is to get in there and to put a wedge between the church and, and Israel. And that's where we know that it's, it's a shrinking, I believe it's a shrinking group, a remnant, if you will, remnant, that is absolutely. adhering to Israel as being God's chosen people still. We see, uh, you know, the vast majority of the church abandoning that, I think, and very sadly, I'm sad to say. But whenever you see things like the seeker-sensitive movement, as you call it, where you have... Um, supposedly thesis coming mm-hmm. into the picture. You have thesis coming in, that is God's word, his truth, and then they invite anti-thesis in, the world, to come in and talk with them, and then they come up with a, a synthesis that uh, supposedly, you know, now we can all live together. That leads to there are more than one way to God, and we see that even among some, I've heard it bandied about, even among uh, some of the uh, mainstream evangelicals, that there may be many ways to God, and then from all of that, of course, comes all of the other breakdown of religion, and you have what Christ said, you know, there would be false prophets, false prophecies. Paul said there will be a, uh, you know, they will not endure sound doctrine, and that's exactly where we are with all of this nonsense. And Israel, of course, is destined to become the enemy of the whole world. That's the way the world looks at it. Actually, the world has become the whole enemy of Israel. We are a remnant, and we've got to remain true and strong in that that regard. You're listening to Understanding the Times Radio. I'm spending these two segments with Terry James. You can learn a lot more at the website that he and Todd Strandberg manage and edit on a daily basis, Rapture Ready, raptureready.com, raptureready.com. You can find the book in my store, Deceivers Exposing Evil Seducers and Their Last Day's Deception. Terry James is the general editor. Got about a dozen writers, including Eric and myself, and really enjoyed being a part of this lineup, including Terry James, Nathan Jones, the foreteller fabricators. Talk to me about that for a minute. Well, of course, I think Nathan has written a book on that himself, basically talking about the soothsayers of our time. Mm-hmm. And, and before, he goes into the history of, uh, of the 19th century, the 20th century, some of the some of the early ones, 
And uh, I did a book, you know, before a Rapture Ready or Not book we did. I'd put in there about, uh, I don't know, probably 50 false teachers. That is, uh, people who would come up with this kind of deception, kind of like the, the Gene Dixons of their day and mm-hmm. so forth, except they were even worse. And where Christ said there would be, you know, false teachers, false prophets, and exactly that's what we've been seeing develop. And Nathan did a, a great chapter on this, uh, putting together some of the false prophets that even we see today, even past the David Koresh and the Heaven's Gate and all of that, coming up into more modern times. This is another key indicator, I think, uh, that we are in an era of uh, deceivers, and Nathan did a great job on that. Let me play just a clip here of uh, Dave Wilkerson. And again, uh, Dave kind of foretold some things that were probably going to happen in the church. A lot of them came true, and some of them came true in a very almost, well, just a stunning way. I tremble when I hear Paul warn us that Satan's going to come right into the church disguised as an angel of light. He's going to infiltrate into the church with his own ministers. They'll come angel-like, he said, preaching a false gospel of righteousness. For such are false prophets, false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it's no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness whose ends will be according to their works. Paul said they're going to come and they're going to glory in the flesh. They're going to glory in their might, their money. They're going to glory in their bigness, their numbers. And they're going to glory in the fact that they are so contemporary. They're going to glory in their acceptance by the world. Jesus warned, beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing. They're to come like gentle sheep, sincere, intelligent, bright. But said inward, they're ravening wolves. And folks, Jesus gave that in the context of his message. He said, because straight is the gate, narrow is the way, which leadeth to life, and few there be that find it. And the very next verse, he says, beware of false prophets. You're going to come in sheep's clothing, but they're ravening wolves. It's Christ himself warning us. False prophets, false pastors, false evangelists, posing as submissive sheep. You're going to come saying the way is not that narrow. The way is not that straight. And they're going to accommodate. They're going to change the gospel to suit the needs of the people. Jesus puts his finger on the motives behind them. Ambition. The word ravening here. Ravening wolves in the Greek means starve for recognition and gratification. Men are going to rise starved to make it. You see it in the business world. You see it on your job. People trying to climb the ladder and get recognition quickly. And folks, it's now in the ministry. Full blown. Deceivers, and that's what we're talking about. Eric, you actually close off this book, the last chapter of the book, From Deception to Deliverance. Why don't you give us a short synopsis? I was thrilled that Terry asked me to do that, and, and knowing it was going to be there, I uh, I taught a little bit in the book, took topics as I do when, when either I'm writing or out speaking, and talked about Mormonism and how it had deceived so many, and then the emergent church, and uh, gave some, I think, pertinent examples in there that uh, we haven't uh, necessarily touched on before. And then I got into my testimony and talked about just uh, how could God use a, a, a little churched kid, and that's what I was. I was not a Christian. I was just a little boy going to church. And after all that uh, that I was led into, after all that I fell for, got saved and came out of it and just said, Lord, here am I, use me. And he began to and talked about that and talked about how Melanie and I had, had stayed together, even though I had well intended to ask her for divorce the night that I got saved, mm-hmm. uh, actually early morning as it was, three or so in the morning when, when I became a Christian and how God had strengthened us and knit us together. And then, of course, began to call us to make ministry, and that, that's now 35 years of ministry we've done together. So that's how it ends, and I, I think that was a, a great way, no matter if it was me or someone else, to give their testimony of how God can bring you out of deception and then into his glorious light, and hopefully I portrayed it in such a way that it was really glorifying to the Lord, and he'll use it. I thought it was excellent, Eric. It was very good, and I, that's another Holy Spirit uh, yeah. thing that was very strong in my thinking. I had heard Eric's uh, testimony in brief mm-hmm. at one point, and God just told me to get in touch with Eric and let him tell his testimony to wrap up this book and that's what happened and I'm so I'm so grateful to you Eric and thankful to the Lord for ending the book in such a fashion totally my pleasure
pleasure. And, you know, God had been preparing me because that word deception, as I told you, and as I mentioned at one point in the book, that the word deception had come up over and over. And uh, God was trying to get me prepared that, that when that word came out of your mouth, I was ready right mm. then because wow, yeah, he'd yeah. already been dealing with my heart. Terry, you are a watchman on the wall, and you, like many of us, are noting some of the things going on in the world today. I follow your blog and lots of articles, of course, also at raptureready.com. But let's just wrap up these two segments. Uh, give me your thoughts on all that's going on in the world, from the Middle East to, again, we've covered deception here, um, because you're you're one of the more profound thinkers and writers that I know. Well, thank you very much. I, I appreciate that. I, I don't know how profound I am as a thinker, but uh, I can plainly see things happening. And uh, yeah. and I think, you know, look at, you just look at things geopolitically, Israel at the center of all of it, you know, no matter which way the cameras turn or microphones turn, or they always end up right back there on Israel. That's right. And as a matter of fact, the more and more they're going to end, end up right there at the Temple Mount. I think that's going to be a big bone of contention from here here on. And so we have Israel, we have all the, the developments north of Israel, uh, and and Dave Reagan did a tremendous job on That's bringing right. the, all the elements of yeah. convergence into the picture. He did a tremendous job on that. There's so many signals. And you know, some people might disagree, but if you've read my writings, Jan, you know that I believe that we're in a time of economic boom. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that this also is predicted in Jesus' words about uh, days of Noah, days of Lot. He didn't predict a world cataclysm at the time. He said there would be buying, selling, and, all, and so forth. Business I think we're, as usual. Yeah, that's right. And better than usual, really. Better I mean, than so usual. I think it will be a time of economic boom when he next catastrophically intervenes. I believe that's what Jesus was talking about. I believe Jesus' prophecy right there in Matthew 20. Four verses 36 through 42 and Luke uh, 17 verses 26 through 30 are exactly where we are on God's prophetic timeline. Well, again, I'm always reminded of Ezekiel 33, 6, but if the watchman sees the sword coming and does not blow the trumpet and the people are not warned and a sword comes and takes a person from them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood I will require from the watchman's hand. And Terry James has assembled a book uh, with watchmen on the wall. They all have a different topic, and it's still all related to deceivers, exposing evil seducers and their last day's deception. You can find it in my store, olivetreeviews.org. Give my office a call. Sign up for print and e-newsletter. You'll find it therein. Terry James, thank you for all that you do. Thank you for being a, an outstanding watchman on the wall. You're sounding the horn all the time, the warning, and we appreciate thank it. So are you, Jan. So, so is Eric. Yep, we I try. I appreciate you so much, and uh, your dear brother and sister and friends, and I appreciate you being in this book, and I think uh, it will bless uh, the folks who, who read it. I do, too. And we'll talk again, Terry. And God bless. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Olive Tree Ministries has an around-the-clock ministry based online at olivetreeviews.org. There you'll learn more about our annual conferences, newsletters, news headlines that define our times, and so much more. At the same internet address, you can also securely contribute to this ministry. Again, visit us at olivetreeviews.org. For ordering an audio recording of today's broadcast, you must phone 763-559-4444. Every week we're adding more listeners from around the nation and around the world. This is because our days are getting more troubling. Fewer answers are available to help bring hope. To get the message of hope out across America and across the globe, please consider helping us as a financial partner. We welcome your tax-deductible gifts mailed to Olive Tree Ministries, Box 1452, Maple Grove, Minnesota, 55311. This year, Israel celebrates its 70th year as a nation. Jan Markell reflects on that special anniversary right after this timeout. Olive Tree Ministries is carrying a new product to help you contend for the faith and understand the times. It is Terry James' new book, Deceivers, Exposing Evil Seducers and Their Last Day's Deception. Our generation is characterized by deceiving tactics in the church, the media, the schoolroom, the government, the globalist agenda, and much, much more. I have contributed a chapter in the book talking about the deception that has invaded the church in the last 30 years. 
Find the book in our web store at olivetreeviews.org. The hardbound 320-page reference book is $19 plus shipping. You can call us to order at 763-559-4444, 763-559-4444. It is also featured in our print and e-newsletter. Sign up online. Don't let the deceivers fool you or those you care about. Many are falling for these deceptions and delusions of our day. Stay in tune and up to date. Order Deceivers today. Hello, everyone. This is Bill Solace, the founder of Prophecy Depot Ministries, and I've been honored to be a guest on Jan Markell's radio show, and I listen to it on a frequent basis. She covers so many different diverse topics, not only prophecy, but dealing with the signs of our times and the political things that are going on with excellent guests. I've seen her show grow from several hundred radio stations up to, I think it's 830 some now, if not more, because people are interested in this show. I highly encourage you to listen to Jan Markell on a frequent basis. In today's world, who do you trust for good insight on current events? For that matter, who do you trust for good Bible commentary? America is full of fake news and false teaching. That's why we want to offer you an alternative to both. We are Understanding the Times Radio with Jan Markell, and our main objective is to tell you the truth about current events as they relate to a biblical worldview. Join us each week on this station for a source you can trust. Shalom. This is a significant year for Israel. This year, Israel will celebrate her 70th anniversary as a nation. We celebrate our independence in a very peculiar way compared to other countries. In most countries, the meaning is about freedom. For us, it's about existence. For others, it is an event in history books. For us, it is still fresh in our minds. In Israel, we celebrate our existence despite tremendous hardships and the anti-Semitism we have faced for the past 2,000 years. Understanding the Times continues with a Jan Markell commentary on the 70th anniversary of the birth of Israel. To wrap up today's session, here's Jan. And I'm going to wrap up our program commenting on something very significant that happened uh, just 70 years ago. Before I do that, a quick reminder, folks, you got to have a ticket to get into Understanding the Times 2018. Here's the toll-free number, 888-338-5338, 888-338-5338. Understanding the Times 2018, Saturday, September 29th, with Jack Hibbs, Billy Crone, Amir Sarfati, and... And Pastor J.D. Farag in uh, Grace Church, Eden Prairie. Again, 888-338-5338. There's still our seats left. And folks, there's not a bad seat in the house. Let me go out of this program emphasizing that the modern day rebirth of Israel happened 70 years ago this week. It's an unprecedented act in world history. Only God could have orchestrated this. And you can try to credit what is known as Zionism, but that will fall short. Yes, Yes, there were dedicated and determined Jews who perished in malarial swamp lands some 120 years ago as they began to carve out a new nation, but that is not what brought them back to the life. What brought them back to life was an act of God. In 1948, the Jewish people were still reeling from the tragedy of the Holocaust, but what Satan used for evil, God would use for good. Still, the enormous scope and depravity of that Nazi genocide against the Jews would be used by God to cause the godless United Nations to have sympathy for an abused and battered people. Two-thirds of European Jewry had been gassed and killed in an unspeakable holocaust. And the survivors didn't know where to turn. They knew they were not wanted in Europe and that they might never fit there again. Some came to America. In Europe and other places, parts of the diaspora, they had faced pogroms, blood libels, forced conversions, expulsions, every imaginable atrocity. They were a gift to the world that nobody wanted. And today, Israel is a gift that very few want. I want to play a short clip produced by CBN. It gives a about a four-minute uh, history lesson of things that happened back on May 14th, 1948. On the afternoon of May 14th, 
Several council members met to approve the final draft of the declaration. The text was approved unanimously. But just hours before it would be read, the new state still didn't have a name. Historical names like Zion and Judea were proposed and rejected. It was Ben-Gurion who decided that the name would be simply Medinat Israel, the State of Israel. One hour before the ceremony, council members rushed home to change their clothes, while a secretary quickly typed out the declaration. With just minutes to spare, Zev Sharef, the man carrying the final copy, couldn't get a taxi. So he hitched a ride to the museum. His car got pulled over for speeding, and a policeman started to write him a ticket. Sharef argued that the ticket wouldn't be legal because the British had left, and there was no longer any government to enforce it. Plus, he added, if you keep us any longer, there won't be a new government because I'm the one holding the Declaration of Independence. The policeman waved them on, and just one minute before the ceremony, Sharef handed Ben-Gurion his speech. Despite the instructions for secrecy, the news had leaked out, and a large crowd gathered outside the museum. Jewish leaders were now racing the sunset to finish the ceremony before the Sabbath began at 5 o'clock. At 4 p.m., David Ben-Gurion called the meeting to order. The crowd rose and sang Hatikva. Then Ben-Gurion read the declaration aloud. The land of Israel was the birthplace of the Jewish people. Here they first attained to statehood, created cultural values of national and universal significance, and gave to the world the eternal book of books. Thus we hereby declare the establishment of a Jewish state in Eretz Israel to be known as the State of Israel. We appeal to the Arab inhabitants of the State of Israel to preserve peace and participate in the upbuilding of the state on the basis of full and equal citizenship. We appeal to the Jewish people throughout the diaspora to rally around the Jews of Eretz Israel and to stand by them in the great struggle for the realization of the age-old dream, the redemption of Israel, placing our trust in the rock of Israel. We affix our signatures to the proclamation on the soil of the homeland, in the city of Tel Aviv, on this Shabbat Eve, the fee, 1948. After each member of the new government had signed the proclamation, the orchestra played Hatikva once again. As the music died down, Ben-Gurion declared, the state of Israel is established. This meeting is adjourned. It had taken just 32 minutes to bring independence to a people who had been without a country for 2,000 years. And indeed, you could search far and wide and still not find another people who have managed to do this even once, and yet the Jewish people have done it twice. And imagine, the Bible told us this would happen before it ever came to pass. First they return from Babylon, and then from the four corners of the earth. You know, we live in a day when uh, we have witnessed these things coming to pass 70 years after Israel's miraculous rebirth. It causes us to ask, 
Will we align with those who are trying to put the Jewish people back in their graves? Or will we be among those who are found rejoicing that God has brought them back to life as a people and a nation? Will we be joining the shameful boycott, divest, sanction movement? Or will we thank God he restored his covenant land? You know, the prophet Ezekiel asks in Ezekiel 37, can these bones live? She came back to life May 14th, 1948. But when Israel declared its independence, dancing filled the streets. However, the celebration was short-lived. The very next day, armies of five Arab nations invaded the newborn state. Nonetheless, armies cannot extinguish what God called into being. Can these bones live? Not only can they live... All the mighty militaries of the world cannot succeed. Ganga Jal Recording Studio, Mahadev Ganga. Sing. 